I was looking in Twitter and somebody obviously got hold of far too many of Ed Litton's sermons before the great Ed Litton sermon purge and is cranking them out. These are all from Romans, from the Roman series. I didn't watch the rest of them. All I needed to do was just listen to Romans 8. I just needed to, I had already watched the one from Romans chapter 1, which I think initially caught people's attention because it was about whispering about sexual sin and all the rest of that kind of stuff. I think that is what put people on the trail of this. And someone a lot smarter than me and with a lot more time than me and interest in me was looking at that going, wait a minute, that's that's the same phrase that Greer used. And, well, that's the same. And then you start putting the two of them together. And it's like, that's the same sermon. Well, the Romans 8 sermon, different topic, right? Yeah. The plagiarism here is, this is not, it's not a question. This isn't about doing, I heard somebody use the phrase, well, they're just doing theology in community. <laughs> there are so many times where there isn't even an attempt to change the words. What has plainly been done is somebody has either you know, Greer does this weird thing where he doesn't have a pulpit. <clears throat> it looks so uncomfortable. But he's got this manuscript sort of inserted into his Bible. You can see it, but he's, he's always got this, and you can tell he's reading stuff, so he's got a manuscript in there, multiple-page manuscript actually stuffed into the Bible. Must I, I could never do that. Anyway, I'm not saying it's wrong i'm just saying it just seems really uncomfortable to be constantly constantly got this thing in your hand and that's but hey teach his own so someone has either received from greer because i imagine you I, I doubt he's a handwriting manuscript guy it's going to be on a computer did he send him the notes or failing that Somebody sat down and transcribed this thing. Or YouTube will trans the YouTube transcription thing ain't half bad. It's amazing. It's scary as it is. Because you can have YouTube is transcribing me live right now. And that might that means the YouTube sensors and algorithms can be looking for everything I just said. This this may never see the light of day, uh, as in being repeated. And most of our audience watches this at a different time. I mean, I, I almost never watch anything live. I just can't fit it into my schedule. I'm throwing it on on my phone and listening as I'm riding or doing what I'm doing. Or now these days, traveling. Um, so they did. I, I don't know how they did it. But the fact is, in this Romans 8 sermon, the points are broken down the same way. The sub points are the same. Most of the time, there's not even an attempt to change words it is blatant plagiarism but what just drives me out of my mind is the utilization of the same illustrations as if ed Litton went through what jd greer said he went through that every illustration when when i have let's, let's use the illustration let, let me give you an example uh just had my 39th wedding anniversary last week so what's sort of fun right now um like right now two of my granddaughters are, are with nani at home so i miss seeing them i'm not gonna get to see them until i get back but you know, we FaceTimed and, and so we're doing our, our grandparents thing. And so one of the things I'm enjoying right now is starting back in March, 
we started having 40 year anniversaries of our first date. Um, uh, earlier this month, June 5th or 6th, one of the two, uh, 40 years since I gave her my class ring and told her I loved her for the first time. Uh, coming up in December, 40 years since the proposal. And on a bike ride recently, I went, went by and found out that the tree that we stood under in the park uh, is still there after 40 years. And it looks like it's been there for 40 years. But all of trees last a long time. It's a, it's a little gnarled, just like I am. Not her. I didn't say that. Uh, like I said, I signed, I signed the agreement. As all guys do, we don't remember doing it, but we do it. We do the aging for the couple. Ladies age far better than men do. That's just the reality. Anybody who's seen my wife knows I signed that in triplicate. But uh, it's 40 years old and it's gnarled, and but it's still there. And I think it's really cool. So we're going through all this stuff. And I'm telling the grandkids these stories. And as I've traveled, I've told these stories to folks. Uh, I've told the story about how I got my woman. And I even mentioned in Twitter um, that I, on our first date, for the whole time we were at Peter Piper Pizza. Yeah, we were, hey, we were 18. At 18, you go to Peter Piper Pizza. Um, our first date, I narrated for her in chronological order and probably nauseating detail, the entirety of the Battle of Midway from World War II. How effective was that? She never dated anyone else again. We married 15 months later. Know your history, men. Know your history. All right? Now, I've told that story many times. My wife just rolls her eyes and tries to hide as I tell these stories. But no one else could ever tell that story as if it was about them. And let me tell you something. If somebody did, I'd punch him in the nose. I don't think there is anyone in history that took a girl on a date at age 18 and told her the entirety of the Battle of Midway, and they ended up getting married 15 months later, except me and my wife. I think that may be unique in the history of the world. So if that ends up in somebody's sermon, in first person, I remember when I took my girlfriend out to Peter Piper, Pete, you know, we were only 18, and, and you never did any of that because you had stolen my sermon? where I happen to mention my experience? How can you even do that? How, how can you get up in the morning and look at yourself in the mirror? I mean, you have got to con have convinced yourself that this is just all a big game. And so here's J.D. Greer telling us in this Romans 8 sermon, he's talking about um, something that I... I experienced, and, and if you're, I think, do they still do driver's ed? I heard that he was telling a story about how when he was younger, and we're in the same age range, um, he took driver's ed, and they had these cars where your instructor, who's sitting in the passenger seat, has a brake. He has a brake pedal. Those are the only cars I had ever seen. I think it was a Chevy Citation, if I recall correctly. But maybe not. But anyways, it was a boring blue car. <clears throat> and he had a brake pedal, so he could slam on the brakes if need be. And I very, he never did that for me. But he said, Greer said in his sermon, that this guy had done that just to make sure that he knew who is in charge? And then he made application, some spiritual application. All right. I thought it was a pretty lame illustration. 
when Greer used it. But here comes Litton, and he uses the exact same illustration, but now it's him. And lo and behold, his driver's ed teacher did the exact same thing so he could make the exact same spiritual illustration. Right. How do you do that? That I mean, I'm just calling that dishonest and so inauthentic. How do you then feign some kind of passionate application? I mean, when I, in a sermon, when I say, folks, now listen to me, this is important. What I'm about to say is coming from my heart from my own study of the text. Not because some other guy at the same point in his sermon got all passionate and said, now folks, listen to what I'm about to tell you. I cannot conceive of this. I, I, I don't know Ed Litton. I had never heard of this church or of him until his name was listed as the progressive candidate for the SBC presidency. I, I never, and right, right about now, he's probably wishing that that had stayed the same for everybody. But this is what happened and this is what he's done. And I don't, given how many sermons just disappeared and the fact that he told the Washington Post one reason for why those sermons disappeared and the church said something different as to why those sermons disappeared you have now a full blown scandal here. No question about it. None. Now, of course, what the other side is doing is you all are just blowing this up. It's not that big of a deal. And all you guys want to do is you want to have Ed Litton resign. So the first vice president becomes president and he was a Mike Stone supporter. So you're trying to undo the election. Hmm, that sounds familiar. That's what's going on. Now. Wow. Because how much, how much more would be found? How much more needs to be found? Does anything more need to be found? I don't think anything more needs to be found. I don't think anything more needs to be found. Anyway. All right. So if you haven't seen those videos, they're pretty easy to find, and it's astonishing. But it does say a lot that there are many people going, well, you know, I just don't see it. This is really a problem. And, I, and the, the, the political, it's the standard Southern Baptist circle, the wagons response. And it's, can't keep doing it. Can't keep doing it. It's, it's amazing. 